Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ringbusters. This is a project that me and Morgan will be having weekly. So you guys are going to have to deal with us here on the Drop Zone Network. This is not your typical wrestling podcast because we are not going to just stick with current events, except for this episode we will. And it's yeah. not because of the pay-per-views. No. Surprisingly. <laughs> Uh, each week, we will go through the history of wrestling, what unique things happen in wrestling, what stupid things happen in wrestling, and everything in between. Yeah. So this week, as our number one episode, we are going to be talking about the 10 men, the 10 women, and the 10 tag teams that are each our personal favorite going from 2016 to the year 2023, which is currently now. But before that, we have to talk about the fact that a woman has attacked the women's division in AEW. Fisto, 43-year-old French-Canadian, has said some very mean, horrible things about the women's locker room, about Dustin Reynolds, Runnels, about a myriad of people in AEW. Now, normally, I wouldn't really touch this subject, but it is a subject that Morgan cares about deeply, which is women's wrestling. Yeah. So we have gone through the tweets, we have listened to the Sean Ross Fightful interview, and we have our own opinions. I think that you're going to probably need to start this because yeah, you so, are um more into this. I... Well, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm more into it. You literally just told me today and I didn't, I'm, that's how I, oh, let's just preface this. This is how I get most of my news is through this guy. He doesn't have Twitter. I don't have Twitter. Uh, I just started following at least a few like AW pages on Facebook, but that's the only way that I'm digesting what the hell is happening. So one, I want to say first off the bat. Um, I didn't know who this person was at all. Um, obviously, I'm totally new to all this. Uh, two, um, I'm a kind of person that wants to take everybody's opinion with a grain of salt until further proven. Uh, so hearing, uh, we didn't go through all of, we didn't go through the whole interview, but we got a pretty good idea we, of what we, she was saying we went about 40 of the 50 minutes. oh really we, i didn't even know we went that much we went, he kind of we went through going. we went through 40 <laughs> of the 51 minutes so we we got to witness the or we got to listen to the experience she had yeah um as a person who like kind of takes people's opinions and their body language and their tone and the way that they make statements, it was really weird to me. It just didn't, it felt like she was trying to make up for a few things. Like she would say a lot of names and she would go into some detail, but then she, it felt like she was leaving a lot out due to like personal reasons. You know, like that's how I kind of took it. But the whole reason I was interested in even listening to it and like kind of digesting what her take and perspective was behind the curtain kind of was because she has, I mean, she had the same idea that I did with the women's division. It's just not up, up to par with my standards. It's weird. Um, I can say the same for WWE. I could say the same for pretty much anything that I've seen so far other than... Um... No, I know, but that one match, um, I can't remember who it was with, but we, you remember I mistook, mistook them for the coven and like she had a leash and it was... Um, oh, what's her name? Kelly something? Right? Kelly? Killer Kelly. Killer Kelly. Killer Kelly. So that is the only thing that I could say. Like I... 100% love the story that they're going with. I really liked all of that. But... Mind you, she didn't know the full story. No, I still don't know the full story, but it's still good. It's a story. And that's what we don't get with the bigger For anybody who's wondering, we're talking about Impact. 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 Impact Yeah. Um, 
But with WWE, I don't see those kind of stories. I I do know of Alexa's story with Bray Wyatt. That would have, you know, that would have really interested me if I was watching at that time. But um, and then AEW right now, I just I don't see any story at all, and it's it's hard to watch their matches without having some background on like, okay, why are they even fighting in the first place? Well, that's the point of wrestling games too. So <laughs> yeah, so what a lot of people get into is because they grew up on story, they enjoy story. But for certain individuals you don't need a story. You just need to do the sports side of sports entertainment. You don't need to have this convoluted Nine year long plan. Like I agree with you. The bloodline spoiled everybody. I'm going to say that right now. The I bloodline agree. has spoiled everybody because now you cannot watch a single episode of any show without a story. Without a story because of the bloodline. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that first. But here is what tipped me off the most about. This whole Lufisto attacking the women of AEW. Um, and this is from personal experiences, so I don't want you guys thinking that I treat it as everybody. Is I've had to deal with people who have sources, sources, but won't say the sources, won't say, well, it was this person. Because Lufisto gave a lot of, oh, I'm going to say... Dustin Runnels, Runnels, I'm going I'm to throw him out on the bus. But this other guy who's my friend or this other person or this, we heard a lot of he, she, him, her. Yeah. And we heard barely, we heard Sky Blue, Anna J, The Bunny, Ruby Soho, Dustin, were a lot of the horrible people, but a lot of her sources are sources. Were unnamed. Yeah. And so I'm like, it brought a lot back to me of having to discuss things and be like, well, what's your source? Well, I, it's a source. Well, yeah. can I have a, can, is it Sean Ross app? Is it this, is that? No, it's a source. Okay. Um, cool. So I personally do not trust her. I don't like it. I think that it's a way to get publicity back. And this was the perfect thing because this isn't the first time that, anybody shits on a AEW champion. And she did it mysteriously after Hikaru Shida beats uh, Tony Storm, and everybody's like, well, there's no real story going into potentially the biggest wrestling show in the history of professional wrestling. So, I figured she was like, yo, I got my, I got my, my way of getting back into the limelight. I don't see it that way. But probably because I don't understand how that works. My thing was, um, and now I'm blanking. Um, I don't remember what my thing was. <laughs> You're fine. Um, it had something to do with. Uh... Oh, the source that she brought up, where she said. Oh hey, arrest like this person watched my match, but and and it was good critique and everything. And he the person said that they were doing a good job, but like she didn't say who it was. She she was very much of I'm going to protect my friends, which you what you should do in the business. But it's yeah. to the point where now all she sounds like is the crazy girl that has an arm that has all these sources or all these or she heard all these rumors everybody's dealt with one person like that it doesn't have to be a girl it could be a guy too where um, they have all this magical information and nothing to bring i was gonna say people. she's not crazy for doing this i think she just isn't unveiling every single piece of truth that she could and she's doing it in a calculated way like you were saying i think she's doing this for publicity but that doesn't mean that she's like crazy and that doesn't mean that her account is 100% unreal which kind of like is a little off putting for me cuz how much is real and how much is true like I, like i said in the beginning i take 
people's opinion with a grain of salt, but how much can you calculate of this person of saying, you know, like, okay, this person did this, this, and this, and they're terrible. Like, without meeting the person, how can you say, oh, yeah, that's totally untrue, you know? But how can you also say that this person who isn't relevant ever yeah. Really, no, yeah. is I, now saying everybody that treated me bad when I walked through this? Yeah. Um, I can't solely advocate for neither yeah. person. I, I love AEW. I love all the women in AEW, especially Willow. Willow, I love you. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just don't know. I guess I don't know enough of her. I feel like we don't have enough background on her previous matches. We don't know who she's friends with. We don't know who she's been, like, been around. She might have known Ruby before. Or she may have known Bunny before. Like the way she was talking made it sound like she knew who they were. And that's the bad part is when you step up or how she said, I'm not afraid to talk about this, or I have to be brave enough, it's you're not popular enough for people to have done their research. Yeah. So you have the cards in your hand. You are attacking a company that has had bad women's matches. That has had years of bad women's division. Yeah. And you're picking the sole thing that is a meme. It's literally yeah. a meme. Yeah. That if you go to AEW and you're a girl, you're not going to have a good career. And so it, it, I see where you're coming from. And I'm the other side because I'm like, she has all the cards in her hand. She's, she really isn't that popular. So nobody's going to go back and well, try to dig up trash on her because what are you going to get out of it? No, yeah, I agree with you. But also with the fandom that AEW has, they're always going to take AEW's side. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, I'm hello, hello. But um, I have to, I have to give them the benefit of the doubt until it's like the innocent until proven guilty kind of thing. Like, I, I need more information. I need more stuff to come out in order to make a judgment and say, okay, yeah, she's doing a really shitty thing and for that, a really shitty purpose. That's the fun part about wrestling. You ain't never going to get it. You ain't never going to get it. We still yeah. don't know who, what really happened in the Brawl for All or the Brawl the, for All. The All Out. The, the, the Brawl Out. The, yeah, the Hot <laughs> Sling. The Hot Sling. <laughs> <laughs> the call out, brawl out, fall out at, at all out. out. Thank you. And we don't know what truly happens <laughs> behind the curtain. And so for any of you guys who have heard the other content I have made, you guys know I will defend <laughs> AEW. I will defend WWE because these are two major companies and people love to attack them. But that's, that's where I'm sitting and I want to read off a tweet. From one, Jacob. Or, oh, I, Jacob, are you? I, you Maxwell Jacob Friedman. I, I, How dare you? He's I, acting so well. He didn't need that. Didn't okay. Need that. So, my favorite from, the of all top, time. from the leader of the women's I locker swear. room in AEW, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. I love, I love him. I if love you, him. If you listen to miserable, miserable people who never made it in this sport, that's not exactly the brightest thing to do. Use your brain. If someone's been in professional wrestling for over a decade and you find them to be talented, but they've never truly panned out, there's a reason for it. One, lack of talent. Two, difficulty to work with. Three, delusional, just to name a few. People love to talk ill of companies and will say things like, I'm the only person who's brave enough to speak up. When in reality, the only reason you're spewing bullshit it's because you are <laughs> aware deep down that you aren't going to make it. So what's the harm in spewing reckless lies and trying to hurt hardworking, talented people on your way down to obscurity? We have an amazing women's locker room. Sorry, not sorry. And that was from the leader, MJF. The leader. So the, the devil. I'm sorry. I have to say, through downtime in the ring, I have gotten to meet people who have worked. For AEW. And they have had nothing bad to say. I've gotten to meet people who are not signed, but have put in 
decades in the Indies. And that doesn't mean that they're talented. It just means sometimes they enjoy it more or they still enjoy the thrill of the hunt. It doesn't mean that you're bad if you've been in this business for that long, for decades, and not gaining it. But it is kind of weird how this all started and how it just all magically has been panning out. It's not like... It's not like the incident with Thunder Rosa um, a few years back where she worked stiff and um, potentially could have hurt a lot of people and the women's locker room was divided. It's nothing like that. I know you're looking at me because you're wondering what I'm talking about. We will get to an episode on that. Um, <laughs> okay. But No, I'm just contemplating what I want to say. It's not <laughs> those kinds of moments this is a out of the ballpark everybody gets excited around this time we have SummerSlam tomorrow as of the day of this recording so if it comes out the week after and you guys just no. when you say that you guys are gonna be like what no, we'll just re-record. um so people tend to get very excited they want to be in the limelight they want to do something for wrestling i understand that my goal is to have uh, downtime in the ring all week long. Probably this too, all week long during rest during WrestleMania week. Be I think cool. that would be so freaking cool. That would be to just have people come on, see <laughs> friends, do vlogs, all that kind of stuff. But it just came out at such a weird point that there isn't anything we can definitively say is right or wrong, but. You're going to pick the one aspect of professional wrestling that has always been a meme. It's kind of like, like what the brawl out will be. What it still is. It's a meme. Yeah. Be, oh, no. CM Punk's going to say something. Who's going to beat him up? Oh, no. <laughs> the pipe bomb. So it's kind of like that. I, I didn't even think about, like, the whole thing about SummerSlam and people getting all wibbly wobbly and weird with it that actually makes a lot of sense because hello it's and huge anytime you get in between a wwe big four or an AEW big four people tend to big sub- four big four so you have what? SummerSlam, wrestlemania oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. royal rumble and survivor series for AEW, you have full gear double or nothing all out or technically all in now and, and uh, Revolution. I forgot their WrestleMania. So people tend to start trying to throw their names once it comes close. And considering that she did it last Thursday, now it's gone through all week. Yeah, leading it's pretty up to wild. this Friday, the she, day we are recording. She definitely did her fucking job she with that her, one. She like, did her job. She has been relevant. For the past week and almost a half. So my question is, is this ever going to be hashed out? Like, is she going to come back? Is somebody else going to say something? Like, I, are they going to wrestle? I don't see why Tony would want her back, honestly. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I think that ship has sailed with that one. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know. I just, um, I just wonder where she's going from here. She'll still work indie booking. She'll still work WrestleCade. WrestleCade is where we will probably see her again be relevant. What's WrestleCade? WrestleCade is in November. It's that giant convention I told you about. Okay. I thought it was called WrestleCon. No. WrestleCon was this was started today. Oh, so, so there's two different conventions. Yes, there is. So Wrestle, WrestleCade okay. is always Survivor <laughs> Series weekend. WrestleCon is always, it's two times a year. It's by year. So it's That's too much for me. It's the week of <laughs> WrestleMania and it's the week of SummerSlam. Okay, this is why I have you because I'm going to forget all of this. <laughs> so we will see her in WrestleCade okay. in November. Okay. Probably. Yeah. And she'll make another comment, mm. um, which wouldn't be smart because there's a lot of AEW women. And fans and no, just the women, like women's, just women in general. Well, I mean, <laughs> Anna Jay is going to be there. Ruby Soho will be. Oh, there. she wouldn't show her face there. Like you they are going to really... be there. So I'm. Like, I don't think she would go then if if they're going. But, and then of course you have interesting. WrestleCon, 
which will be in Philadelphia the week of WrestleMania 40, which we might see her again for that. And she might try to come over to the WWE side one more time. I really could see that. Um, which <laughs> I have really a weird feeling. The about. way she, you know, the way, sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you're good. Um, The way she talked about WWE for that short amount of period, like that short amount of time versus AEW was a full fucking 180. Yeah. Full 180. She was like, you know, they were so nice. You know, I did this, this, and this, and it was actually enjoyable. And I just found it weird that she had to add that in there. Yeah. She really didn't have to. No, she didn't. And so, mm, I don't know. This sucks. <laughs> and for any of you guys who are going to be first timers into wrestling, I'm, we're going to do probably a mini series of two or three episodes where we discuss the difference between the pandemic era of AEW and WWE and seeing the family dynamic that happened between them. Cause you guys, and AEW? So AEW's, you know, like I told you, like, Sean, we're going to let's place a bet. And you had yeah, AJ I, and Sean I do want to talk about that. Sean Spears betting on people while yeah. there's nobody in the arena. And then you had... <laughs> Sue drive bringing home or dropping off uh, Chuck Taylor and Trent. I Rota. love. I wish. I wish they brought Sue back. That would be really fun. Sue only comes from the wait. Ones. Wait. So Mike. Wait. Now. Now here's my thinking. Um. Since they're gonna have a a, a parking lot brawl, do you think Sue will <laughs> drop them off? I hope so. I but uh, please. I hope please so. Please wrestling gods. We need Sue back. <laughs> we need Sue back. We need Sue. I never got to, I never, I was never introduced. I've seen Sue, but I want to see Sue, like, Sue. live. <laughs> I want to see her live. <laughs> so, from there, that is our thoughts on the yeah. Fisto. Yeah, and well, let's whole close that. Weird <laughs> dynamic that has happened. If you guys want to know more about it, please comment. If you guys want yeah, to go let us into episode yeah let us know what uh your opinions are on it what what you think she's trying to do if she has ulterior motives or if she's actually trying to change women the women's division so let's get into the main event of tonight the main event and so the main, <laughs> the main event of tonight okay we will be counting down the list of our top 10 men women and tag teams from the year 2016 to the year 2020 why did I choose 2016? Because that was when I got out of high school and I've showing, been showing Morgan a bit of that kind of wrestling, but we haven't really gone into the pandemic we really years. really haven't. <laughs> which the pandemic years, they were just tough to watch. So <laughs> they yeah. were because there was there's no, no cheering. There's no chance, huh? Other Yeah, no. Without chance, I don't know what wrestling is. Other than, it's you know, like so Japan. <laughs> weird. It's so weird. So, um, I have one comment So I didn't, I, so with mine, I didn't separate them from WWE and AEW. I also, not. I also didn't separate the women and the men. So you just did, a, I just did a whole ass list. Oh. Okay. So <laughs> okay. You, you can go first. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Where do you, want? where do we want to start? Men. Men? <laughs> okay. Well, the, you go we'll men, tag team, and then save the women. Okay. Okay. So my top 10 wrestlers from the year 2016 to the year 2023. Who's on your number one? No, I'm going back. You're going back. Oh, f I'm gonna okay. Say number one for the good. Oh, shit. Which number 10 will be the indie king or the indie god now, Matt Cardona. Number nine is John Moxley. Oh, you're going through all of them? Yeah. I thought we were going to go through like. Oh, say why? Want, oh, okay. I want to so go through I'll, and say why. So I'll go number 10, Matt Cardona. Okay. Young, little, baby Donovan, watching wrestling, fell in love with Zack Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. You had, <laughs> he had everything that I was like, man, that guy is cool. He had the spray tan, the sunglasses, oh, God. the spiky hair. Wow, the, I can picture it now. The sweatband. Oh, he no. He was chiseled and tough. He wasn't always booked. I could see him as a beach boy. Kind of. Really? Oh, um, shoot. But he was more Jersey Shore. Oh, yeah, that still fits. <laughs> so, Matt Cardona, Zack Ryder, made me connect with somebody who could be goofy and bright colors and 
still be an amazing wrestler and didn't have to be sounds familiar doesn't have to be like like we all love john cena and john cena wore the bright colors but then he wore the jorts and the nike i can't like, believe he would go out like that like i'm so i, I don't know if it's just me because i haven't seen that era but like how do you not go out in in gear <laughs> like, like i don't get that oh man. <laughs> that's weird yeah <laughs> So Zack Ryder was always one of my favorite. He, like I said, he was never Zach booked. Ryder? Zack Ryder, who's Matt Cardona. Oh, oh, oh. Um, okay. He was never, he never really was given the opportunity that he truly deserved. I hate that name. Zack Ryder. I'm sorry, I hate that name. That's so '90s. It, that the yellow is '90s. It's ooh, like ooh, ooh. you know it. <laughs> so that is my number ten. Okay, you want to do mine? I don't yes. have 10, so I'm just going to go from, like, my least favorite favorite. Okay. Okay. So, for the men's, I... You're going to be surprised. For the men's, um... Pac. Pac was on my favorites. Um, Neville. Uh, when I first saw him uh, on Blood and Guts, I was like, I fucking hate this dude. <laughs> I didn't like... I didn't like his hair. Which, hilariously enough, you have very similar hair. Uh, I didn't like the the way like the way he worked the ring. Yeah, I didn't like it at all. I didn't get it. I was like, you know, I really could do with less of this guy. And you just came back, but um, I really quickly warmed up to him with his match um, with um, Gravity. Yeah, I was like, wow, okay. Uh, sign me up because that, that UK style kind of weird, huh? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I one, I absolutely, absolutely love his intro. I, I swear to God, if he changes it, I'm probably gonna go back to not liking him. I love his intro; it just matches his energy, and it kind of made me understand. Oh, hey, okay, he's kind of just this really. He's the master. Yeah, like definitely, you can just see the British UK kind of feel like. You're in a deep, dark, dun like moldy dungeon, and he's just there saying, "Like, hey, let's strap you up and torture you." And I, I for that. So that was my my first pick. So number nine for me will be <clears throat> the man that made me pee my pants at our show, John <laughs> Moxley. Oh my God! Yeah. So, yeah. So John Moxley, Dean oh, Ambrose. Man. C E C Z W Moxley. Damn. John has always been that that one random dude that you can always relate to when he was the lunatic fringe in WWE. Mm. It's, it's just weird to say that John is at number nine, which means that the, the list is gonna get crazy, but it's because I don't always have to see John Moxley to know that I'm going to hate him. I don't have to constantly have him booked every week. I don't need to yeah. constantly say, Man, why didn't they put Mox on? I'm also one that doesn't really make jokes about him bleeding constantly. Oh, to no, you totally don't make jokes about that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. No, but you're every time. Uh, I'm I'm actually surprised that I didn't, I didn't put him on my list, but I'm s very upset that I didn't. Yeah. Um, because uh, we were talking about it. When was it? Wednesday. Yeah. Um. Yeah. On the 200th episode or something, he always bleeds, and I like. I I I am. I've noticed my favorite. One of my favorite things is like bleeding. Yeah. nasty like oh shoot you shouldn't be doing that like my first my first favorite match that really actually got me into all of this was the anarchy um in the arena. anarchy in the arena so yeah. and it was the the blackpool combat club it against the, the js society the and i was like sign me the fuck up where do i get more of this blood and guts and gore and like Blood sprayed everywhere freaking ketchup bottles in the elevator i love it so i was like Ever since then, I, I really did like John Moxley. You guys are gonna like our stadium stamp. He hasn't seen either. Oh, ooh, are you telling me I get gore? No, you oh. get stupidity. Ooh, love that too. Yeah. 
Football you have more to say about John? Not right now. Okay. Let's go to your number two. My number two. Oh, no. I have a lot of guys. Um, Let's... Uh, I feel like I'm not giving him enough props, but I really wanted him to be on my list. Um, I'm going with Kenny Omega. That's odd, but okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's not my complete favorite, but he's really grown on me. Um, I like that I got to find out that the logo for Forbidden Door is his eye. That's, I yeah. thought that was freaking awesome. And then when hearing that, I was like, well, why? And so I got, I kind of got more of a idea of who he really is, how much he's done for wrestling and how much he puts in, into all of his matches. And I was like, that's fucking commitment. Yep. That's like commitment to the highest degree. So I, you know, I'm kind of seeing, a, I'm kind of seeing a pattern with my stuff and with my favorites. They've all been in the blood and guts match, <laughs> yep. but I, I don't know. I just, um, something is very admirable in saying, you know, I love wrestling so much that I'll put my body on the line for it. Um, that's something I guess I find very respectable. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have to say about Kenny, really. <laughs> so my next one is Kenny Omega. Oh my god, hey! My number... <laughs> you're number yeah. three, but yeah. like, you're number eight. My number eight, yeah. so... <sighs> Goodbye, and good night. Bang! Bang. So, <laughs> Kenny Omega, why do I like Kenny Omega? What has Kenny Omega it's not really in the wrestling aspect of why I fell in love with Kenny Omega. It is the fact that he is a nerd to the core. Ooh. It is the fact that he was rejected personally by Vince McMahon. What? It is the fact that he said, I will go to Japan. I will wrestle children. I will wrestle dolls. I will Wait. wrestle <laughs> children. He, uh, he will wrestle dolls. He will wrestle himself. <laughs> he has done everything he could to get over. And once he Aww. got over, he said, all right, cool. I'm going to go to the Bullet Club and be a bad guy and still have people chat on Japanese wrestling here oh. in the States. Go, I like him. Do I respect those people? Not really. Because I'm like, you only liked him because of the guy jeans. Oh. But the fact that oh, he nice. made it come to America, and then he was like, you know what? I'm going to join these weirdos that nobody likes Aww. and we're going to become the better part of the Bullet Club back then. They're like the older version of the best friends. Kind of. No? no? Oh. Well, I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? No, that is it. Okay. Uh, so next on my list. Oh, gosh. I love all of them. I can't. Um... My number eight would be Keith Lee. Keith Lee? Which I feel is controversial right now because he's not doing much. And that breaks my heart. Um, he was one of, he was another one of my ma uh, matches that made me fall in love with wrestling because let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. I thought wrestling, you could just fit one body type. No. Keith Lee. And I literally remember, I was like, he is built like a fucking unit. And I love, love, love wrestlers who are on the heavier side because that actually, like, is so much more impactful, literally. Like, they will hit you with a fucking freight train. And I love it. I love Keith Lee. I want to see more of him. I really want him to grow, like, into, into a, a better story. I feel like they're not they're not sure what to do with him and I'm really really sad cuz I absolutely love him. He looks like a teddy bear of a man. If I ever got to meet him, I would all I would want to do is just get a hug and be like you are awesome. You made me love wrestling. That's all I have to say all about right. Keith Lee. PSA for you guys. She's going to do this a lot through the series. She's going to say they're not doing much even though they probably have They had probably a match. are. They, and she I just, don't watch a lot. Yeah, so she's going to say, and that's something that she needs to work I on. I will work on it, but I, I... Maybe you need to get a Twitter and just follow everybody yeah, on AEW. Yeah, I follow it on Facebook, but I they only do, like, the highlights. Of the 
course, you know. So my next one will be Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel, who's that? You have it. You have it. You're safe on this one. You are absolutely 100% safe. For anybody who knows who Matt Seidel, you know why I, I think that he is one of the coolest high flyers still to this day, even though he's older. Um, for any of you guys who don't know who I'm talking about, Evan Bourne. And if you guys do know who I'm talking about from that, then, you know, Air Boom was something cool. Having him do the Shooting Star Press into an RKO will always be a memorable moment. WWE still uses it to, to like, always, always one of my favorite moments. The fact that he came out during, I believe, the pandemic, like right at the beginning, and he had that little slip on the turnbuckle, and then being the elite came out like a few days later, and mm. Matt Hardy was like, they made it. They filmed it after the pay-per-view, but they made it look like Matt Hardy put some oil on the on the turnbuckle before the match for Matt Seidel. Like Bam. he's okay with being with not being the best guy. Um, and that's what I love is that he's small, but he doesn't tell the I'm the small guy. I need a, I can still be the best story. He's I'm the small guy. I'm the flippy do guy. I'm still gonna outperform you. And I love it. And I think that it's one of the best things. Confidence is key. Yes. Confidence is key. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Um. So my number seven would be... <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, uh, my number seven would be Logan Paul. Really? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, he's technically not my number seven because, like I said, I don't have a full List. number yeah. of people. So he's high up there for me. Um, I when he was first introduced and he debuted, we were like low key I, shitting on him. I think. I mean, I, I felt like you didn't see his debut. You've I thought I did. No, you've never seen his debut. Wasn't it with Ricochet? No, it wasn't. When was his debut? Wait, I wait what? was at WrestleMania 38 tag teaming with The Miz against Rey Mysterio and Dominic. You've never seen his debut. Oh, I always thought that it was the you one with Ricochet. and you never asked. Well, because we don't, I mean, we don't really talk about Logan that much, do we? No, but you still have never asked. Well, I... Yeah, I so you have two matches that you've never seen. Not, okay, but still, the, what I've seen, and I thought was his debut, but it wasn't. What I've seen is I really, really like um, his moves. And you've told me before that he was trained by Adam Page, right? No. So, he was. That's how he learned the buckshot lariat. Yeah. And he's been fully trained by Drew Guler. I don't see it. I don't know who that is. For anybody who likes, <laughs> who likes more of the business side, you guys are going to know who Drew Gulak is. For anybody who likes to meme, you're going to know who Drew Gulak is. Oh, is he a meme? Is he a big meme? Like and It's because we don't see him that much. Oh, oh. So he's a meme. Okay, he's like the dad that went to get milk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Drew. Oh, Drew Gulak. I'll be right, right back. <laughs> Okay, okay, got you. Well, um, I don't know. I, I like his wrestling style a lot. Um, I like his flippy doos. Um, he seems to really surprisingly put a lot into his wrestling. And I I appreciate that a lot. And he's pretty controversial, which is fun. <laughs> what about you? So, my next one is the man that gave me the confidence to head down to Texas to it is a man that actually answered me on Twitter, which was kind of weird. I don't have that account anymore, and I hate it because I always want I I am always gonna remember that tweet. But the Wolverine, the machine, Brian Cage. Oh, Brian Cage. Not who I thought is the man that answered me when I said, "Hey, I have." A wrestling training tryout. What advice do you have? He said, be original, be confident, and remember everything takes time. You got this. Brian Cage to me is the guy 
that everybody loves to shit on because he looks like the stereo the stereotypical WWE guy. Mm -hmm. But if you look at his history, he hasn't been a real world champion ever. He's held titles, but he's never gotten that opportunity to say, I'm the guy. And so Aww. to always go and have this physique, have the movesets, be able to do this, to do A, B, C, and D, and yet you're never going to get the, the opportunity probably breaks as many hearts as just trying to get into the door. Yes, he signed, but at times you can tell he just wants that one match. And I'm always going to love it. I'm always going to be a supporter of Brian Cage. That's one person that I definitely want on down time in the ring. I know we love a little bit of focus, though, but Brian Cage will top off the bottom half of the board. Bottom half. So that would be number what six? six. Okay. Okay. I think I have four left. One, two, three, four. So I almost have a full list. Okay. Um, okay. Uh hmm. So my next one would be Orange Cassidy. <laughs> Hilarious that you pick those up. Yep. That's funny. Did you know that mine would be No. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, my <laughs> My next one would be orange. Um, I didn't like him at first, like most of them. You hated him. At I first. I hated him. I I I knew what he was doing, and I was like, hmm, can't vibe. But the more I saw of wrestling, the more I could appreciate it because everybody puts so much into their gimmick that it's like some people put way too much. Like it's like overwhelming. Orange just sits back and is like. All right, hands are in the pockets, and I love it. I love it. He can do nothing at all, and people cheer for him. And to have that amount of energy in a ring without doing anything is, is phenomenal. I love it. I love him. That's not supposed to happen. Like I said, I don't have anger issues. I have an idiot problem. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Kevin Owens. Uh -huh. I love everything that Kevin Owens has done. There has never been anything that I have disliked. He was the only good red strap universal champion, and I will defend that. The, that the, 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 the uh, Festival of Friendship with Chris Jericho will go down as one of the best. Please tell me we're going over that. Yes, we that will go over amazing. We will go. <laughs> we will go over the festival of friendship. Uh, yeah, definitely going to be interesting episodes because you guys are going to totally get to see the goofier side of professional wrestling. And I'm excited for that. But yes, Kevin Owens is my next one. Cool. Uh, I can relate. Um, let me see. So, man, getting down to it. So my next would be Bray Wyatt. So this would be my third, technically. He's number three on my list. Um, I absolutely love him. Um, he gave me a different element to wrestling that I had not seen before. Um, an element that I, I fell in love with as quickly as possible. Like, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't explain the way that I love this guy. <laughs> so we will be going into the history of Bray Wyatt. I really, really am super duper excited. I, from what you've told me from the previous storyline and his personal hardships and just the person he is seems just like, I, I need to know more. I need to know everything about him. I, I want to, he's another person I want to hug, but for different reasons. She so, wants to follow the buzzards. I want to follow the buzzards. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. That's all, all I have right. to say. My next one. Hey, hey, yeah. Yo. <laughs> I love it.
Good talk. Good talk. Yeah. So your so your next one? Um my next one. Um <laughs> You should know this. It's uh, it's Chris Jericho. Uh, a lot of these are AEW. Just saying because um, I seemed to get more into AEW um than I did with WWE. Nothing against WWE. I've started to really like it, especially with like the Bloodline story. <laughs> We're spoiled, yes. Um, but. Chris Jericho. <laughs> I'd actually listened to one of his songs before I knew he wrestled. And so I already liked him without knowing him. So um, the fact that he, I don't know, he's just really cool. He's so multifaceted. Like, I feel like no one can hold him down, you know? Yeah. He's just that cool ass person that you just can't hold down. And he's got his own ideas, his own things. And he's... He just goes above and beyond. And I like the story that we're getting right now with him and Don Callis. Oh, um, him debating if he's going to join the Don Callis family. I really, really am liking it. Um, I thought I'd hate it. <laughs> I feel like that I say that with everything, but like I thought I'd hate it, but I'm growing to like it because I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to do it. But we will anyway. See next week. Yeah. At the mandatory JAS meeting held yeah. at. AEW and I have no idea where they are. I don't know. So my next one is the Spanish God Simp. Ooh. Sammy, I I enjoy it. Sammy, this isn't gonna be like a more heartfelt or personal, even though he's very high on the list. It's more of the fact that I can relate to the fact that he struggled for a long time to find his dream he's found it all he wants to do is that and no mm. matter what yes Sammy has a past a past that definitely got him into a lot of hot water for a long time that if you look at the the man now compared to the boy that got in trouble it, it's a complete 180 and I think that's how we all have to go through life and a lot of people will point mm -hmm. out their hardship his hardship without pointing out their own, mm -hmm. which I very mm -hmm. much enjoy pointing out to people in general. Um, but yep. for the most part, I'm very happy to see where he is. That's another person that we are going to try to get on downtime in the ring because I, I have so many questions to ask him about his style, his love for Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> He's just awesome. He's an awesome dude. I, I, so cool. I, I get so excited thinking of somebody that I want to have on Downtime of the Ring. I can't yeah. talk because that's one <laughs> person I definitely want. That would be really cool. That would be really, really cool. Okay. Uh. Well, my last one, and I have a feeling you already know who it is. Who do you think yeah. my number one is? Oh, it's MJF. Oh, yeah. Yeah. MJF takes the cake. MJF takes the cake, literally, and eats it and then runs away with it. And then has a pizza party after. Yeah. I, I mean, He's there's so, uh, there's so much to say about him, and I cannot even begin um, because I feel like I'm going to be saying it all throughout this this podcast. Um, like I'm always, I'm probably always going to bring him up. Um. <laughs> so this is our our, our uh, episode alert of MJF segment. Yeah, for real. Like we're we. I'll probably have to be like, okay, warning, I'm talking about him again. Yeah. Um, I I I <laughs> I love that he's an asshole. Okay, I love that he's intelligent about being an asshole because who doesn't love that? Um, I I lo I love his promos, I love his mic work. I feel like no one, literally, no one can surmount to what he's doing right now. I cannot compare him to anybody that I know. Probably in the past, yes, but I don't know them. And I love how he can just full 180 turn his character around. I love that. And I love to hate him. I can't wait to see what he does. Either way, if he's a scumbag. He still says he's a scumbag. Or a best friend. Or better than you. I don't care what he's doing. I'm going to love him regardless. It all happened because they got my sugar now. 
That's all that happened. So I guess for my final two, we're going to have to travel to Japan for this. Next Ooh, okay. So we are going to talk about the aerial assassin, Will Ospreay. Ooh, now, what? I've been a big fan of this man. Really? For years. Oh. Since, the, since I got to see the world tournament that had a match between him and Ricochet, and it looked better than any Marvel movie could ever come out. Their sequence, to um. my mind, Will Ospreay, <laughs> the confidence in this man, the aggression in this man, the fact that this man put on so much muscle and can still outfly anyone. Hmm. If we were to see him versus Ricochet, Part two today, I don't want to imagine what that will be for Ricochet. <laughs> the fact that this man is not the same man that you get to see in Philadelphia that night, this is a whole new beast in himself. He decimated Kenny Omega. They went to the ends of the earth at Forbidden Door 2. Oh my god, I was just going to bring that up. That was one of the Best matches I've ever watched. And it was just reverse Wrestle Kingdom. Really? It basically was. Will Ospreay did everything that Kenny did to him. Much worse. Huh. But well, I, I Dropped, love it. Dropping love him it. on his head. Jeez. Slamming him through the table. Making sure this man bled. Real Profusely. blood. <laughs> it was insane. Ah. That is my number two. Okay. Who's your number one? Should I guess? Uh, you know, I can never pin your number one down because you say, oh, I absolutely love this guy or I absolutely love this guy. Um, if I had to choose, I feel like it'd be Biggie. Nope. Oh, my God. I was going to have Biggie on my list, but I, I don't know what happened to it. But I Biggie would be on my list. But anyway, Biggie's on a list, but not on the singles list. He's on a list for me, too. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I can't. I don't know. Um. The Prince, the original leader of the Bullet oh, Club. Oh, really? Finn is oh. my number one. Okay. Since huh. his coming to NXT, I have never connected with a wrestler. I have never wanted to meet a wrestler more than Finn Balor. Hmm. Okay. The, the, the fact that who he is as a person... Compared to who Virgil Devitt or Prince Devitt is in the ring or Finn Balor is in the ring or the demon is in the ring are so far but and few in between that it makes me just want to hang out with this man. I love Finn Balor. Finn Balor has always been somebody that has made me motivated, has given me that drive from seeing... Just the the fact that everything comes so easy to him, but he's very humble. He doesn't care that, you know, he's in fantastic shape. He gives off that vibe. He just, and to see him with the Judgment Day, and most people complain and go, he's not getting his flowers. I see it as him and Damien are setting Rhea and Dom up for the future. Yeah, it's 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 like he's handing him he's and, handing them his flowers. And if he has to and he gets to have a little fun with it and be the bad guy, yeah, then he's going to do it. Yeah. But he is setting Rhea and Dom up for the future. Yeah. He is setting up JD for the future. He is setting up every young superstar he goes with for the future. But this match at Real SummerSlam true. is for him. This match at SummerSlam is seven years in the making from when Seth tore his shoulder. Oh, they have a match together? We got what we wanted? Holy crap, I didn't know we had that match. Okay, wow. Whoa, so, that's going to be good. With this match, I don't care when or if Priest cashes in. I just hope that it's at the end of the match and we get the full flowers full everything for this match i'm very mm -hmm. excited 
for his SummerSlam match. I'm I'm really really excited to watch now. Um, I didn't know we were getting that match. <laughs> you hadn't told me the card yet. Usually, I ask day of. I should have asked. <laughs> so. Let's move on to tag teams. Do you have any tag teams? I have four tag teams. I will. <laughs> I will. I will condense mine. Okay, thank you. Um, how many do you have? Ten. I will condense Please. it down. I will condense it down yeah. to four. I'm okay, sure. thank you. So my first one is pretty deadly. Pretty deadly is um. Hip check, boy. Hip check boy. Okay, so I have some shit to say about Pretty Deadly, okay? okay? I feel like they're not up to par with a lot of the tag teams. But, but, they are, I think they're getting pretty popular. Yes. Am I wrong? Yes. It, they're they, getting popular, and I absolutely love it, because I, I saw their potential. I don't remember what when so we, we had watched, a match, but. We watched the NXT where they faced the New Day. That's oh really was it that one? Oh, they shit. faced the New Day in NXT. The New Day went over. The New Day was dressed as Avatar. Oh yeah, yeah. Characters and yeah. pretty deadly were Santas. So um, I I I loved the way that they like presented themselves in the ring. I liked the sort of attitude they had. It was more of a like mm, you can't touch me kind yep. of thing, and I kind of. I was like, oh my god, this reminds me of um, <laughs> someone I work with. Yep. And so I was like, okay, we can get back with this. Um, that's the only reason I love them. I think they have a lot of potential. They just need to kind of grow into it. You can tell they're not really comfortable yet, I feel like. you know. But um, once they do, I feel like they're going to flourish, and I'm all for it. You have a fan pretty deadly. So I will go with my lowest tag team out of the ten. Well, okay. I'll give this one. It is the current WWE ta Women's Tag Team Champions, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. Okay. And that is purely why I love them. is Because, because of the way that they're announced. Literally, that is it. Props to the announcer. Samantha the Urban. Props is, to Samantha Urban. Is amazing. Yes. And that's it. Yeah. That's why. Yep. Okay. That's fair. Um, I don't a women's tag team I have, on my list. I have a mixture. Okay. Um, my next one would be. Oh, shit. okay. I've I have come to a crossroads. I love all three of these equally. If I if I if these three are announced, I for sure am sitting down and watching them. Okay. Well, I'll have to go with um, Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens. Okay. Um, if I see them going against somebody, I will definitely watch. I have a feeling they're not going to be a tag team soon. Uh, they'll probably disperse, which breaks my heart because I loved the bit. I loved the bit where, uh, Sammy was like, anger, anger problems. And Kevin Owen just like slammed somebody into a fucking he brick has, wall or something. He, I love he it. He has idiot problems. He yeah. doesn't have anger issues. I love both of them. I don't know if I will love them separately, but um, if that happens, I will. I probably will. I just want to see where they're going with it, but I, I love them. I love she them has yet team. to see them feud for the 50th Ooh. billion times, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see when we do those episodes of, you know... Yeah, maybe I'll get a good flavor of what if I like them or not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My What's next one is DIY for anybody who's wondering. That is that is Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. They had a fantastic run in NXT and an even better feud in NXT, leading to both of their main roster debut. Well, kind of. I believe Ciampa got hurt for a bit. Gargano went on to go up against Andrade, Adam Cole, Keith Lee, become the heart and soul of NXT, and also the bad guy with the way. So there's so many different things that these men have done, but DIY is definitely a tag team that I love, that I am so sad that they are not going to be at SummerSlam, challenging her tag team, because I think they would have stolen the show. Oh, really? DIY versus... Oh. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. That would be a good match. I don't. I. I. Yeah. Would have stolen the show. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, ooh. And this is solely just because of what we've been seeing lately. Um, the acclaimed. They're my number two, so we can do it together. Uh, woo! They're my number two, so Sit we can do me, it me, daddy. Yes. Yeah. And when we went to El Paso and oh, saw, oh man, I was scissoring everybody we were, in the audience. Yeah, we were. Oh man, I, we, so we, much I was like, scissor me, everybody. So and everybody much was going. <laughs> It was, it was fun. It was amazing. <laughs> it was it was great. I um I just love them. I just love them. I I like the um the angle that they're working with this other with chick. QTV and yeah. Harley Cameron. Yeah. Love it. Please give me more. Like I need I need more. Just just more raps basically. Um I think they bring a a nice comedic relief. Almost like you don't have to take them seriously, but like you still love them and yeah. you want them to do great. And if something happens, then you'll cry about it. But they're mostly there for relief. <laughs> so when we went, they lost to the guns. Yeah, yeah, and that was wild. I was very much <laughs> we worried really that the crazy. entire arena was going to erupt and that AEW would never come back to El Paso oh. because I, if you guys think the silence in Montreal was bad when Sammy lost to Roman. Oh, I can tell you oh. the silence from a ton of Mexicans who have, <laughs> who had adopted the acclaimed as their own mm -hmm. and seeing the guns beat them was horrible and very sad. It was, <laughs> it was devastating. Uh, it was quiet for a long time. They had to bring, <laughs> they had to bring Penta out before yeah. Rampage for us to get excited again. Because we were very much mad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I love them so much. Yeah, that's why. So who's your number one? Who's your number one? <laughs> Is it the same again? It might be the new day. Oh no! Well, I'll go with mine. Mine. Wait, but are th well? I guess they are a tag team. It's the W W E. 14 World Tag Team Champions! <laughs> hey, we love the new day. Hey, we, we love, love the, the new day. day. <laughs> new Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. <laughs> I love the new day. They made me too. fall back in love with tag team wrestling. Uh, those are three men that I have gotten to enjoy for such a long time. Big E being the more prominent member that I love more is Big E. I love Woods, too. I love Woods. But I love Big E. I love a bigger guy that can be silly and still be scary and still get the championships and still win, but also does not mind rolling his entire body sideways down the ramp during the pandemic because we're <laughs> all bored and he knows that people are going to oh. love it or having a so uh Corey graves he used to have an angle where you know how they had those like jackets the rip off oh what the jackets no like the jacket he has oh he doesn't have his jacket on that one but he, they used <laughs> to have like these long trench coat jackets or okay. he did Okay. They're heavy. Okay. He would rip it off. Yeah. And right before the match, oh, he would throw it at Corey Graves. Shoot. <laughs> oh, and Corey was like, I don't know what it was, but he would always throw it. And so Corey huh. started trying to dodge it to the point where he would run <laughs> off the rope and throw it as hard as he can. And you could hear it during the <laughs> pandemic era. You could hear it slap. Yes. You could hear it against the plexiglass. And we're like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I think that the new day created so many unique ways mm -hmm. from up up down down to the new day pod to all of these ways for us to enjoy wrestling more mm -hmm. but not having to see a match i love the new day okay so i have a problem and a question uh i had the new day on there i didn't have them as a tag team i had them as a faction yes they can be a faction yes so I have okay. Well, now we have to, you know, not I don't have any faction. I don't have any factions. What? 
Because I have ten. I have like five. Well, that's okay. I have. We'll say. How about this? We'll say factions for its own episode. Aww. We will say. But we can rapid fire it. Okay, fine. Okay. Well, anyway, so my my number one tag team right now. Did you guess? The bromance of the summer. Yep, it's the bromance of the summer with MJF and Adam Cole. Uh, I absolutely love it. That's all I have to say. Um, I'm really hoping we get it for a little longer. I know it's going to come to an abrupt and devastating and apocalyptic end um, because everybody is truly in love with it. Um, I don't want it to end. I know it's going to end. And it's going to hurt me, and I'm probably going to cry. Tony Khan lo- loves to kill momentum. Yeah. So, so at all. <laughs> we're like, yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just really sad. It makes me sad. So we will move on to our ladies. How many do you have? I have four. You have four ladies. I have four ladies, and that's um really sad for me. That's really sad. We I can, have. We can quick fire the ladies. If you only have yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, how many do you have? Ten. Aw, oh, you sweetheart. <laughs> I just, uh, I can't get behind them. As a woman, I can't get, I need more. I need more context. Anyway, um, my first one, my, mm, would be Alexa Bliss. Um, we, I haven't really actually seen her wrestle. Yeah, no, I haven't seen her wrestle. I've seen, like, her storylines and stuff on TikTok. I absolutely love who she is as a person. Um, Lexi Kaufman. I just I like it. I like her. I, or I, Lexi. I think I like her a lot because if I were a wrestler, if I was in wrestling, that's who I would be. That's who I would want to be. That's who I would like associate myself with. Go ahead. Um. So I have, and I'll just lay all ten of them out quick, and then if you have any sure. questions, you just ask. You just stop sure. me. Uh, number 10, Diamante. Number 9, Bianca Belair. Number 8, Rio Ripley. Number 7, nice. Sky Blue. Number 6, Ty Mello. Number 5, Anna J. Number 4, Maki Ito. Okay. Number, number 3, Liv Morgan. Number 2, Tony Storm. And number 1 is the current NJPW Strong Women's Champion, Julia. Julia. Okay. I don't know two of those people. Julia and uh, Maiko. Maki Ito. Maki Ito. Maki Ito. Yeah, I don't know those two. Um, I also have Rhea Ripley. Um, I have Ruby. Um, you know who I don't don't have that was a favorite on my list when I first started watching is Tony. Yeah. Um, I didn't have her on there. I I just don't like this version. I don't like this version of her, and I love her to bits. I wish her all the best, but I really can't. I, I think the out, I think the outcasts are gonna break up at I all in. I hope so. Fuck's I would please. love it for them to break up at all in and just give Tony her flowers. I want Thunder Wembley. Rosa back. I so want it back. There's a lot of people that don't. Why? You'll learn. We'll do an episode. Oh shit. Okay. Well, and then my top was Willow Nightingale. Oh, okay. I I love I love. Her I hits. do not have factions. Okay, so my factions. I can't believe you don't have factions. We were. I thought we were gonna change. Keep that for a separate episode. Well, do you want to get a list then? No, because it's fine. Okay. Well, mine was uh, the best friends. Absolutely love them. Is there a faction? Yeah, they're a faction. I love the best friends. I love the back Blackpool Bullet Club. Right? Are they a faction? Blackpool Combat Club. Combat. The Bullet Club is. Wow. Yeah, I can't believe it. The Blackpool Combat Club. The Blackpool. Look, guys, Black- I was. <laughs> Blackpool. 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 Combat. Combat Club. Club. I don't know where Bullet you came said from. The BBCC. BCB. BCBB. <laughs> All the B's and C's yeah. in chat, please. Um, and then I had the New Day. And then I had the Elite. We love the new day. <laughs> and then the Judgment Day. I had the Judgment Day on there. Her you didn't day. have the JAS. <gasps> no. No, because I feel like they're going to be broken apart. And actually, I only really like a few select people. I don't even know. You don't like, the you don't like Daddy Magic. Yeah, no. You don't like Cool Hand. No. You don't like Daniel. No. You like Anna. 
You don't like Anna. No. You like Ty. I do. You like Sammy. I do. You like Jack. You don't like Jake Hager. You don't know who Jake Hager is. No. So, okay, so, so, so see? He, he gets put on his <laughs> own island. Yeah. And then you like the leader, which is... I love the leader. Chris Jericho. And that, Jericho that's Chris. why I didn't put him on where I was like, I'm going to put you in individually, but like your faction kind of like, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. And that's it. All right. <laughs> So that was our first episode of Ring Busters. That was a lot. If you guys like this episode, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell icon so you guys can always stay in the loop. If you guys have any suggestions or anything that you guys would like her to experience for yeah. the first time in the world of professional wrestling, yeah. which could be anything from the Brawl for All, where we have to redo all of that drama. Or the fact that you want us to go into as much as we can the the call out, brawl out, fall out, at all out. Or anything very interesting, like I said, a whole episode on why people don't want Thunder Rosa back. Or the fact that uh that. you have no idea who Adam Cole is at all, really. No. So, oh, that'd be really interesting with what's going on yeah, right now, because I need un- more context. The undisputed era, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, no. You have no idea what the, uh, the kingdom is at all. No. Either. So there are a lot of different things in the world of professional wrestling. It will not always be just us. We will have yeah, friends okay. constantly come in <laughs> who are very passionate about certain different <laughs> types of wrestling. Oh, boy. So we will always have different views it just won't be ours we hope you guys like this video and we'll see you in the next one bye